All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use loops uh, in C Sharp. This is chapter five in your handout, in your book. And then I gave you a handout, handout that uh, explained these loops. And the first example here, this program, when you click on this, it just does different. We're going to do different examples of a, a while loop. And here, when you click on this, it will draw lines on the screen or, uh, or something on the screen. For example, rectangles. It will draw rectangles on the screen. And this one will clear the input in the list box. So go ahead and double click on the while loop. And the first example we will do is a simple example, like a counter. It will count how many, basically it will count certain values and display them in, inside the list box. So we're going to say, define an integer called count. And then we're going to make it equal to 1 to start with. A while loop, or pre, uh, preconditioned while loop, it's like an if statement. The only difference is that with an if statement, you check your condition. If the condition is true, you do it only once. With a while loop, you keep on doing it while this condition is true. So if I go like this, if I say while count is less than, let's say, 10, I want you to do the following. Now what happens here, with this, in this case, my condition says count is less than 10. So if I, as it stands right now, this condition is true, right? Because 1 is less than 10. So what happens? Now your program is stuck here, inside that loop. It will never get out until this condition becomes false. The first example I'm going to do, I'm going to do it actually on purpose, leave it as an infinite loop to show you the difference in your C, uh, computer usage. All right? Now I'm going to say, we have a list box, right? Before the list box, we want to define a string that formats our output. Do you remember the formatting the output? We define a string and then we format the output in it. And then we add it to the list box after we format the output. So I'm going to say define a string. String, for example, output or, uh, or message or whatever, or result. Okay. And then I'm going to say result equal to string dot format and then what we want to say we want to say count equal the value of count right so I'm gonna say count equal curly bracket zero curly bracket and then comma count so what does that do this would format the result and it will have in it count equal whatever the value of that count. Yeah, the first time it is equal one, so it will print one. It will, no, it will not print. It will be in this format, it will, in the result it will have, it will have in it count equal one. Okay, type. After I format my output, I want to add it to my list box. In the past, when we use text box, we used to say text box one dot text, equal some value in this case result here we have a list box in the list box you can add many things so how do we add to the list box you type in lst do you remember what did we name it lst output dot we have something called items so in the list box you have a list each list this list is called items each one of those is an item and then I can add to these items. For example, I can say add. What do we add? I can add my result, the one that I want to show. So here I can say add result. Got the idea? So the list box has items in it. These items you can add to it or remove. When you say items.add, it will add to the items that you have in the list box. All right? Now, what do you think is going to happen here? 
it will run. But what happened to this loop? Do I get out of this loop or I will, I'm stuck in this loop? We're stuck. Less we're stuck in this loop because this condition is what? Count less than 10. We start with 1. But do, does it change? So it stays the same. It means I'm stuck. This is always true. So I'm stuck inside that loop. I'm going to run it like this first to show you what happens. Okay? If we run it and go ahead and click on the button, notice your program is stuck. You cannot do anything with it, with that form. You cannot move it. It's stuck. Now I want to show you the CPU. If you hit Alt Control Delete and look at the task manager, look at uh, performance, do you see the CPU? Where is the CPU usage? At 36%. You're actually eating away from the CPU, simple program, but it's using 36% of the CPU and you're not doing anything. You got the idea? Now if I stop it, watch what happens. Because I have four CPUs, Look, this one is very busy. Okay, it's more than for the. See, one of them is very busy because I have four CPUs. If I stop the program, how do I stop the program? You just click on this stop here, right? Stop debugging. Go back to the CPU. Notice right away what happened to your CPU? It went down 18%, 12%. You got the idea? So now that loop was eating away from the CPU and it does nothing. Al-Fadi, مثل ما كنتوا تحكوا. Okay? Right? Now, what do we do with this? We need a way to stop my program. How do I stop my program? The only way to stop my program is what? To change the value of count inside my loop. So, if I go in here at the end and I say count equal count plus one, or you can do it another way, by the way, you can just type in count plus plus. What does that mean? Count plus plus is the same as this one. Yani it's the same as adding one to it every time you add one to it. So when you say count plus plus, you add one to count. Okay? I will leave it both ways so you can see the difference. Okay? But I will comment this out because we will use it later. Now what do you think is going to happen inside the program? First time count is equal. 1. Is 1 less than 10? Yes. So I go inside here and I print it out, print out the result. What will print out? It will print out count equal 1 the first time. Then we go next. Now count was 1. I add 1 to it. It becomes 2. Then you say, is 2 less than 10? Yes. Then we repeat the same thing. It will print out count equal 2 until no. 9. Until 9. Okay. So now let's go ahead and print it. I'll run it. If I do while loop to Andy from 1 to 9, yeah? Now let's go ahead and run it again. Watch what happens. If I click on add, click again on add, what do you think is going to happen? Every time I'm adding to the list box, from 1 to 9, again from 1 to 9. Every time I click on add, what's ha happening? It's adding to the list box. But this is a problem, right? We need a way to clear the list. How do you clear the list? Do you see this clear button? We want to program it in a way to clear the list. So how do we do it? We go to the form, double click on clear, and I am in the button that clears. To add to the items, to the list, we say the name of the list box that items that add. What do you think to do with the clear? What do we do? The name of the list box dot items dot what clear. Yani badal add instead of add. What do we do? We do clear. All right. So list box dot items dot clear. Okay, now let's go ahead and run it again and see what happens. Now clear, the list is clear. Again, clear, the list is clear. All right, type, is there a way every time when we click on the while loop, first it clears the list and then adds to the list? 
Can we clear the list first or not? Where can we add it? Not after the loop. Before the loop. When I go to here, for example, when I double click on my button, the first thing I want to do is what? I clear the list, then I add to it. So all I need to do is that copy this one here, control copy, and then put it at the beginning, before the loop. Why do I do it that way? That way it clears everything before we add to it. So I don't have to click on clear every time. Click clear every time. Now if you run it, watch. It clears the list first and adds it. It clears the list every time. It's clearing the list first and you add it. Okay? That way it's better, right? Instead of asking the user to click the clear and then I add it again. No, we save time. You clear the list first. Then it adds it to the list. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What about, the about what? Now we will do next the draw. Are you okay? All right. So I'm gonna stop. Pause this for a minute. And I give you a break. Okay. So that was the first example with the while loop. If you go back to the uh, while loop again, and here, every time we're adding one. But if you add more than one, <laughs> all right, so we had a, a blooper in the video, so we'll come back to the video. The projector wasn't on. Here, we add one to, every time we add one to counter, right? But let's say I add two to counter. What do you think is going to happen? I start with one, and every time, what do I print? I add two to count, right? Let's see what happens. I'm going to change this to 20 instead of, so you can see more. Okay? Now let's go ahead and run it. And then I click on the while loop. The will end one, three, five, seven. Do you notice anything about these numbers? What are these numbers? Odd numbers, right? How did, we, how did we get the odd numbers? First, we start with 1. We change the condition to less than 20. But every time we're adding what to, to count? We're adding 2 now, right? We're not adding 1. We're adding 2. If I start with 2, what do you think will happen? What would be listed? First time is 2. Next time is 4, 6, 8 until 18. So now if you run it, you'll get the even numbers between 2 and 14. Okay? So if I ask you to list the even numbers or the odd numbers, this is the easy way to do it. Alright? Alright, we're done with this first video. In the second video, we'll continue and I'll show you how to do the drawing. Alright?